This right here is a little phoenix fox. It's got humongous ears. Now, in this video, we're gonna stop and smell the flowers. Because sometimes in life, that's just what you gotta do. So I'm gonna be telling you a nice short story, okay? We start off with this little bee here. Maybe you recognize this bee. He's, he's from the movie, the bee movie, right? And this is his little homie, or not really his homie, but this is a wild dog that lives in the same environment as little bee here. Now, this bee is the king, okay? He's popular, everyone knows this bee. He's from the bee movie. And he's just roaming around and occasionally he notices a flower and he decides to go to it. And interestingly, every time he goes to a flower, he smells something real nice. This thing he smells that is real, real nice is called nectar, okay? Nectar. It is produced, this is a sap, or a sugary substance produced by the flower, okay? And it's done on purpose because it attracts this bee, okay? This bee likes this, okay? And he's going to stick his face right in here to try and find it. By the way, don't worry about these definitions. I'm going to bring up a lot of definitions like these, but I will have a, a slide um, I mean, um, I'll, I'll have a list of all of them in the end of the video, okay? So you can just go to that to check them out in the word form. Now, so he loves this nectar so much, he sticks his face right in, looking for it, okay? And he notices so many interesting structures in the plant that he was like, wow, I just noticed this for the first time. There's so many structures. It's a lot more complicated than it looks from the outside. I mean, it's beautiful on the outside, but inside it's a mess. It's pretty complicated. So what is he seeing? Let's see, let's look, let's take a look at what he's actually looking at. So here we have a zoom in of this little flower, this rose, okay? Not that you find roses in deserts, but um, whatever, okay? And bear in mind, his little friend here, this wild dog, is going to become real important in the, in the, uh, later on in the story. So let's open up this rose and see what the heck it's so interesting that this bee is noticing. So we cut it open, we look on the inside, okay? Wow, that's a lot of structures, but it's really not that bad. It, it's, we'll get into it slowly and notice it's really simple. Now, funny enough, flowers, as we know, come in a lot of shapes and sizes, right? There's so many species, so many that you can think of. Um, but maybe you didn't know that plants, I mean, flowers can either be male or female, just like humans, um, and other species, but sometimes they can have both. They can be male and female, okay? So this is also a very common characteristic in flowers. They can be both male and female, just like a rose. And we'll see exactly what this means. So let's get into some important structures. The very best thing to start with is the bud stage. Because where does this flower come from? Where, right? It comes from something called the bud. The bud is the form of the flower before the flower grew, before the flower emerged and formed, okay? It is like the fetus of a, of, um, of, in humans, okay? It is not yet a fully developed be human being, same here. So the bud is a little thing, a little ball that branches off of the stem, okay? And it's little, it's round, okay? And, and, and it will transform into a fully fledged flower, okay? So that's all you got to know what a bud is, okay? It's the beginning of a flower. Now... What is a sepal? Sepal. Sepal is this little structure here. Hmm. Now what? I thought that was just a leaf. No. This sepal is the thing, the structure that looks like a leaf, that surrounds the bud. Okay? It's the one that supports the bud, protects the bud from, from damage from the outside world, allows the bud to develop safely. Okay? So you can see here, it's little leaf, and before the flower formed, this was surround this little leaf, these sepals, were protecting and covering the little ball, the little bud, okay? Allowing it to de develop properly. Only now, when the, when the flower emerged, this sepal popped open, okay? So now it just looks like a normal leaf and has no real purpose anymore. Now, what is a petal? A petal is this little beautiful part of the plant, okay? It's what we see on the outside. It's this little red, red um, structure, okay? Or, depending on what flower, it could be different, but... In the case of the rose, that's the petal. So that's real complicated. Sepal, petal, it sounds so similar. Sepal, I can help you remember. S for support, okay? S for strength. It helps to protect or support the, the bud in the beginning of the plant's, the, the flower's development, okay? 
whereas petal, P for pretty, okay? It helps this plant look real pretty. Now, that's actually important to look pretty because the reason why this bee comes in the first place to this little rose in the desert is not because of the smell, okay? It's because of the looks. So when he's floating around, he doesn't um, smell anything yet. He doesn't smell the nectar yet. He sees the flower and he's like, wow, that's pretty. And he goes to it and then he smells the nectar. So the petal is important to attract this little bee in the first place. Okay, pollen. We all know pollen. When it's come spring, there's pollen everywhere. Now, what exactly is pollen? Pollen is the sperm of a plant. It's the male reproductive um, gametes, okay? Um, it's just the name for, for sperm in plant, okay? So it's the, it's the male part. It's the male juice, the male um, magic potion, okay? That's what you can think of it as. Now, we can't see it here, okay? Because it's, it's not in this diagram, but... Where is it made? It's made in this part here that we can see on the diagram. It's made in this yellow part here called the anther. Okay, this is the this basically like, like the male penis of a plant, okay? So the anther will make pollen, okay? Anther makes pollen, that's all. Now, anther, that's a complicated word. How do you remember that anther is the male reproductive part? Very simple. It ain't hers it ain't hers so it's got to be his okay if it ain't hers it's got to be his so the anthers is the male part because it ain't hers now it produces pollen now what holds up this lovely male organ okay what holds up the anthers it's called the filaments let me make this clearer The filaments is the little pipe, basically, holding up the anther. Why is the filaments important? Why can't we just have these anthers lie down here? The reason being because um, the anthers, the higher they are, the better. Because when this bee is looking for its nectar, it's sticking its face into the flower, looking for the, the nectar. And in the process of looking for the nectar, its face is going to get in contact with these um, anthers. And the higher the anthers are, the easier it is for the bee to get in contact with them. If the anthers were really, really low, then the bee may not touch them so frequently, may not become in contact with them so frequently, and this means the pollen that is on the anthers, made by the anthers, cannot um, go to the bee. And we'll see why we want this pollen to go to the bee very soon. By the way, the nectar is found in this blue part here. Do you notice? Very hard to see, but there's a small blue area here. And that's where the bee is trying to go. Okay, so this was all the male parts, okay? Male parts, except for the sepal. That belongs to both the male and the female, but all these three, male. By the way, how do you remember that this is male? I remember, I was taught that this was the male part because it looks like a bow and arrow, okay? The bow is pointing upwards and this man is about to shoot it, okay? He's about to shoot this bow and arrow because in the, in the olden days, men were the hunters. So this is how you remember this is a man part. Now we go on to female parts because I said, a flower can have both male and female parts, especially if it's a rose. So the stigma, the first female part. The stigma is this part here. It is sticky. It sounds like stigma, sticky stigma. Okay, so what it does is it is its job is supposed to catch the pollen. So when the pollen um, gets moved from the anther to the stigma, it sticks, it stays there. Okay, and when it stays there, it's important that the stigma gets the pollen because after this, something very important is going to happen called fertilization. But we're going to talk about this in the next video. We're only going to care about how the pollen gets to the stigma. In the next video, we talk about the next step. So now, so the stigma is a female part, as mentioned, okay? Now, what's holding this female part, the, this part that's supposed to catch the pollen? It's called the style. Okay, the style is like the filament, but in a female. And it's easy to remember because females got style. Okay, males do not. Certainly not me. Maybe some males, but not me. So, style. Now, it, it kind of makes sense so far according to humans. Because in humans, the male will send the pollen or the sperm to the female's uh, private part, right? So, it's kind of the same thing. The female's private part receives the pollen. It's not like reverse in plants. It's the same kind of concept. Now... Where is the female's goods? 
The ovary is where the female's goods is stored. It's the little room. So the ovary is called the little room. It's this little round part. So you notice this little round part here? That's called the ovary. And this little part inside, these little balls here, looks like a six pack. That is called the ovule. Okay, this is the actual female gametes. This is the actual female, um, uh, what do you call it? The actual female magic potion, okay? So, when the pollen lands here, you're going to see, we're going to learn in the next video, a way which the pollen is brought down into the ovule for them to fertilize and meet each other, okay? But that's not the focus of this video. So, this is all the female parts, okay? So now we know what this bee is seeing and we know it's trying to get nectar and we know in the process it's going to pick up some pollen, okay? Now, what's next? So here I have some big brain tips, right? I already mentioned these. You can just read over them. Sepal for support, petal, pretty. Anthers, ain't hers, so it's a male part. Stigma is sticky and women have styles. Okay, so now we move on. So the bee now... He picked up some pollen by accident, okay? But he's done now. He got all the he got all the nectar he needed. Now we want, we know what we want. We know this pollen has to end up somehow on the stigma. Okay? Maybe in the process of picking up these um these uh, uh these uh nectar, he managed to to transfer some of the pollen to the stigma. Maybe, but only a little bit. So this is this is important. This is one way that it happens. So let me show you here. We're going to talk now about pollination. Pollination is the process that we're talking about now. The process by which pollen, the male part, is transferred to the stigma, um, the female part, from these anthers. Okay, so the pollen transferred from the anthers to the stigma. This is pollination. Now, when it happens like this, from one plant's anther to its own stigma, it's called self-pollinization pollination when it happens from one plant so let's say this plant uh, this flower's anther to another flower's stigma so let's say this flower's stigma that's called cross pollination now we know how self pollination happens i just showed you maybe the bee transferred some by accident but how does um i mean that's self pollination how does cross pollination happen cross pollination happens when this bee moves this pollen to another plant, to another flower. Now, but he's not going there for some reason. Right now, he's just sticking around. He's like, meh, can't see any flowers around. My eyesight's not that good. So what happens now is interesting. A wind comes out of nowhere and blows everything out of proportion, okay? So this wind moved the bee to a different place, okay? So he's now closer to this flower. But also, besides that, the wind shake this, this rose around everywhere. It shaked it around in all directions. And in doing so, it caused some of the pollen to move from the anther into the environment. So, let's show this. So, some of the pollen move from this rose into the open space. Maybe it will go find another rose somewhere else, okay? And land on another rose's stigma, okay? This will also be called cross-pollinization because it's going from one rose to another. Now... So wind is an important, an important um, mechanism of pollination. Pollination, you need to know that, okay? Now, this bee ended up now next to this little wild dog's face, okay? And he's bzzz, bzzz, buzzing all around his face. And this gets him annoyed and he runs. So he's running and he ran straight through this rose. And in the process, guess what? He picked up some pollen because he ran right through and some of the pollen went, went straight from the, from the anther to his hair okay it got stuck on his hair and he keeps running okay he keeps running to another place he's trying to find his homie now meanwhile the bee is now closer to this flower so it sees it and he's like wow that's beautiful and he goes once again falls for the trap and he goes and he smells the nectar again he sticks his face in but this time in the process of sticking his face into the flower he drops off from his face some of this pollen so now this pollen will come into contact with the stigma and land on the stigma, okay? So this is another example of cross-pollination. Now, now that this, let's move it. Wait. So now we have this pollen. 
Oh, crappy, crappy. So now we have this pollen um, transferred onto the stigma, okay? Another way that I can get there is if this wild dog is running and it runs into another flower. Only this time, some of the pollen that he had on his skin goes into that flower and lands on the stigma. So this is where we get up to now. In the next video, we're going to talk about how this pollen that landed on the stigma will transfer down here and to the important female gametes, the magic potion of the female. And this is going to be called fertilization. So that will happen in the next video. We'll continue the story and finish it up. Now, but lastly, here is the definitions of all the words I mentioned um, that you need to know in case you didn't catch it quite well when I said it. And by the way, just mutualistic relationship is just describing the relationship between this bee and the flower. The bee is um, benefiting because it is getting nectar, it's getting food and energy, whereas in the process, the flower is getting its pollen transferred to another, to another flower. Okay, so both the flower is benefiting and the bee. The bee is getting food, the flower is getting its pollen spread around um, to other plants to allow reproduction and uh, allow it to spread to different places. So that's a mutualistic relationship. Both organisms are benefiting in their own way.